Hello, my name is Trey. Welcome to What Kind of Change. Welcome to the late night court cases. So what we got here tonight is Mr. Boyston here, either with an S or not an S, is uh, on trial because he apparently went to go see like an ex or in some, in some kind of form or fashion. And so I know you're wondering, where is the lawyer? Well, somebody, somebody asked that and I'm going to tell you the lawyer is actually right behind me. So just pretend I'm the lawyer, but my mouth doesn't move when I talk. All right, let's get the video going. You know, have you been, Mr. Boykin? Have you continuously been in custody since May? I've been going. What are you doing? What's that? I've been going. Mr. Yarnick, I'm not trying to put you up with the ruler in the bed. I've been going back. You right now, I've been going back. Back and forth. That's how I got a warrant like this, Your Honor. I was I, I just went to court. Um, I went to court for a motion hearing the 21st. They came up with a plea deal. I took it because I'm trying to get out of jail and get back to work and take care of my kid. Not meaning that I did it, but I just took it so I can get out. And then I'm thinking I'm about to go home and this case pop up. I don't understand, Your Honor, honestly, how I got this case because she invited me over there. She was telling the police. Hold on, Your Honor, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, sir, sir. But here's here's what I'm going to indicate. Okay. First, you don't want to say anything as your attorney is going is trying to tell you. You don't want to say anything that is going to incriminate you. Second, if there's a court order that prohibits you from contact or going over to a particular residence, yes, your honor. The person that you're prohibited from contacting doesn't have authority to say, "Oh, you can come over," unless yes, there's a court order that changes that. You cannot do that. Yes, Your Honor. And, and, and I'm sorry about that, Your Honor. Listen to me, client. Shut up. Okay. That's where how they get you. See, she knows that you got a court order, baby. So if she invites you over, maybe she wants you to get a midnight snack, if you know what I'm talking about. Or maybe she just wants to hang out. Or maybe she wants you to see the kid. I have no idea. But remember this always, young men. Never trust the devil in disguise. When it comes to a woman, man, <laughs> I understand it gets lonely out there. And it sounds like this is obviously a girl he dated, but obviously they were toxic. That's why he has the restraining order. Please never, never fall for she invited me over. She wanted me to come over. She said she's going to give me the kitty cat. I don't care what she said. I don't care if she was a five-star chef and she said she was going to cook you something that not even Gordon Ramsay could hold a candle to. You sit your butt cheeks at home because if you don't sit your butt cheeks at home, your butt cheeks going to be in the cell. And now look at you. You're talking behind bars. Your Honor, uh, I'm, so, I'm so sorry about that. I take full responsibility for that, Your Honor. I was the wrong for that. I'm not trying to make noise. You right. Oh, why would you apologize? You pretty much just said you did it. I would have lied. <laughs> I wouldn't have lied. I just wouldn't incriminate myself. Be like, I'm... As far as I know, I was I was at my house. Do you have any proof? Do you have any? Well, I let my lawyer speak for me, but you know, that's how I be telling my lawyer. I be like, uh, there's no evidence. There's no proof that I was over there. She didn't make no TikToks. Ain't nothing they could say I was over there, man. Okay, I don't care what the text messages say. If if they got subpoenaed, I don't think it would in this case. But I don't know what the text. So the text message said I was over there. I don't care what they say. I'm telling you, I wasn't there. Okay. And so, how are you in custody today? Uh, because I got released uh, from my plea deal. They gave me a GPS tether, no contact with the victim, which I would not have no contact with her. And this case, up, up on for the tether people to come do the tether thing for me, this case popped up on me. I don't even know what this case is about. Which where I was not even aware I had a warrant for this because I would have been there to plead okay. email in my room. All right. So, Mr. Lincoln, I'm going to tell you this that. We waived the formal reading, but I will tell you that this is regarding an assault or resisting and obstructing an officer. This is from June 30th. And unlawful imprisonment is the other count that's alleged that you knowingly restrained Ms. Griffin, Daisha Kira Griffin, to facilitate the commission of resisting and obstructing a police officer. So those are the two charges for this one. Oh, you want to ask What do restraint mean? Like I held her down? 
Um, I, I don't know if necessarily you held it. It doesn't necessarily mean holding her down. I don't, I don't have all that information in front of me right now, sir. Lawyer, can yeah, you say something? Right I'm asking a question. I'm assuming that the lawyer um, is here for a different case and not this one specifically. But yeah, I would even ask about like restrain. See, yeah, I mean, if the police just put stuff on me, man. You got dash cam? I mean, dash cam. You got a body cam? I didn't restrain. <laughs> I mean, he's not, he's in jail, but I don't think he's been to court for these charges. So he is sitting in, he's sitting in court trying to fight the charges. Okay. But he also said he took a plea deal so he could just get out of jail. Stupid. That's what I indicated to you when I read the charges to you. You remember that? Yes. Yes. Yes, you did. I mean, um, sorry. Never mind. The lawyer read it to him. Hmm. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just confused, Your Honor, about these charges and things. Stuff. I, I don't know what's. Well. Sir, it appears though you've had several contacts with the Riverview Police Department. I want to say something that random that has nothing to do with this court case. Do you notice how old these lawyers are that you can't see behind me? Okay, there are two lawyers that are right behind. Hold on, you'll see them. Hold on, give me a second. Let me do this. You see these two lawyers? You see how old they are? That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to be old as. Heck, still doing my job. Still just fat and walking around. I'm like, yep, been at it 60 years. Never going to give it up. They're going to have to drag me out of this courtroom. For the no contact. So, yeah, yeah. Um, hey, Your Honor, some of the times, like, she will call the police. Shut up. You can't talk. You are not here to defend yourself. <laughs> we saw what happened to the one guy. That one way. Anyway. <laughs> Nonetheless, the one person who tried to defend themselves is an idiot. Okay? You don't want to defend yourself because you're just going to say stuff that's going to incriminate you. He just keeps saying, Lawyer, I mean, uh, Your Honor, she just. She did this, she did. Don't do that. Just sit back, relax, have a good day. The lawyer's going to try to get you out of this. That's what he's there for. He's going to try to get you out of jail, get your sentencing down or whatever's going to happen. But if you try to protect yourself, what are you going to do? The lawyer's going to be like, oh, so you did go do there. Uh, that's what you did say. But this lawyer in particular, I'm going to be honest, even if he didn't say anything, she will question you. Because I, uh, I saw some cases where she questions the defendant. And the defendant tries to defend themselves and they just look stupid. So I, don't, I know that she's saying don't say nothing. But sometimes I've seen her ask defendants right to their face. Did you blah, blah. Well, she won't ask that, obviously. Not in that way. She'll be like, so you did say this and you said this. You said this. So when did this happen? You said here in the court of law sworn that you went to her house. When was it? She'll say something like that. Mr. Boykins, please don't say anything because anything you say right now can be used against you. You understand that? Oh, yes. You are, sir. Sorry. All right. Do you recall the time that you took a bunch of pills and vomited and were transported to the Henry Ford Line Hospital? No, Your Honor. I didn't take them. No. Okay, no, sir. Do you, do you remember any of that? No, Your Honor, I didn't take no no pills at all, Your Honor. I took my medication, which is boost bars. I took no! one pill. Don't say nothing about taking anything. And she says, Do you remember you say I don't recall? Anything like that happened. Because when he starts saying he's taking medication, she's got her next question, if she does ask one, will be, Hey, so you did take some pills. Is that what you're saying? You did take I don't think she's I don't think she's like that, but that's what I would do if I was a judge. I don't know, I don't know what I do. I know, right? The lawyer not being next to him is hard because you want to defend yourself. You're in a, It's not like the lawyer is right next to you. You're sitting in a cell cold. It's cold at night, baby. You getting ready to go eat some biscuits and gravy. I mean, it's just not a good day. So you're like, but she did ask him a question straight. So this one, I mean, like I said, she'll ask you a question straight. And I've been sick that whole day because I got lupus. <laughs> 
I said, I've been sick that whole day because I have lupus. When, can you, can I just tell you, when, when the police handcuffed me, I've been, when they came to me, I told them, feeling lightheaded, I have lupus. So I got the like, like I was lightheaded, so I got the falling over. I don't know if they said that that was resisting arrest, but I ended up going to the hospital for that, and this document shows that I have lupus. I told them that, and I guess they tried to say I did that. Hold on, hold on, hold on, sir. I was merely trying <clears throat> to uh, refresh your recollection and maybe jar your memory a little bit as it relates to this incident. That's why I asked you that question. I wasn't trying to um, get into all of your medical history yes. or whatnot. I was just trying to see if that maybe would have helped you recall what this incident is about. That's the only reason I was asking you that question. Okay. And so counsel asked to bond. Your Honor, um, as indicated, he has been incarcerated uh, now for uh, at least uh, 30 days. I believe he's been in jail since uh, July. Uh, he got out on your previous case and you appeared in court on that day. Is that correct, sir? Uh, 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 okay, he, first of all, you have to talk right in the microphone. He's having a hard time hearing you. Right. He was just in court last week, and if I recall correctly, Mr. Boykin, when you were in court last week, were you in custody or not? Yes, I was in custody. I've been in custody since June uh, 30th. That's why I thought he said, but I wasn't sure. Your Honor, so he has been in custody on June 30th based on these allegations. No, no, no. He's not been in custody since June 30th based on these allegations. He wasn't even in custody. He was not in custody on these allegations. I didn't even sign the complaint warrant on this offense date until July 19th. No, so he was in custody for something else. No, he was detained then. What, which evening? On the June 30th. And okay. That's the date of these allegations. However, when he was taken to the county jail, I'm assuming that there may have been some sort of uh, probation violation that was filed. I don't not know or find. Well, but he has indicated to me that when he appeared, I I I don't mean to cut you off, counsel. I just uh, from the June 30th warrant. Or the June 30th incident, active warrants at the time. Sterling Height are the abuse of the computer. That's the felony one from the county. Guys, let me say something about how. Judge, judge, your honor, please let me speak. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> didn't mean to cut you off there, your honor. Uh, I want to say this. Guys, if you have a warrant, the good, the, the, they normally put out warrants for you if you don't show up to court. You know? And yeah, there's a good chance if you do show up to court sometimes, they're going to just go ahead and take you right to jail. My thing is just show up to court. You have a way better chance of not having a warrant put on you if you just go to go to the court and be like, look, judge. I can't do it. Now, normally they give you some leniency. It normally takes about maybe the third or fourth time of you screwing up for them to just take you to jail right then and there. Unless it's like a felony warrant. I mean, unless you're not a felony warrant, unless you like committed a felony and you didn't you didn't go get your alcohol tether or something like that. But or like he said, he has a GPS tether. Um, so they know where he's at at all times. I'll say this, just go to court. You know, I've had to go to court even when I told the judge to their face, look, man, I ain't got it. I show up anyway. I always try to plead my case, even if I know there ain't no chance in the world, but sometimes just showing up and telling the truth and trying to be as honest as you can. Some judges are buttholes, but some judges will be like, Hey, look, all right, we'll give you till blankety blank, 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 get it together. But if you don't show up, you're screwed. If you don't show up, you're screwed. And it, the, the great thing about these uh, today is a lot of court dates, you can show up in Zoom. So if you're just at home, you ain't even got to get clothes on really like that. Just put on a decent looking shirt. You're fine. I mean, back in my day, I, you always had to show up. There was no Zoom meetings when I went. This is when I was a young man. But every time I used to have to go to court, it was always you had to show up. And I live way away from the courthouse. So it might be a struggle for me to get there. But if you can do it in Zoom, just show up. You can do it off your phone. You can just call in off your phone. Download Zoom on your phone. Call in and be like, yes, judge. Mm -hmm. Your honor. 
it's so easy today. Just show up. Just show up. I know it's embarrassing. I know. Even if you failed, even if you screwed up, you're doing a show cause to explain why you didn't do something. Just show up. If they're going to take you to jail. They're going to take you to jail. I'd rather them just take me to jail than them come pick me up while I'm sitting at my baby mama's house. You feel me? <laughs> Dearborn Larcy and currently has a bond condition order with Clinton Township and have no contact with Daisha Griffin. So I don't know if there was a, there may have been another incident in Clinton Township regarding these individuals as well. So there were four other matters. There are three pending warrants plus a bond condition. He's going through it. Look that at him. appears your client violated. And then the three warrants. So he's not in custody solely on this matter. So I just wanted to clarify that because he's not, yes, no. So he's, he's um, critical about various areas. Right. Oh, with respect to this matter, we we just want to read. Uh, he is, has been provided with a bond, a uh, personal bond uh, with other conditions, et cetera. Uh, we'd ask that that bond uh, be continued and that he receive in this particular matter, a reasonable bond which he could uh, prepare and make uh, defend on these cases as well. I would suggest a personal bond, uh, or even a uh, 20,000, 10% bond, uh, so that he could add with, of course, the tether. Well, he's also scheduled to appear on October 16th for sentencing on the. I thought it was the 27th. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, well, either way. <laughs> Okay. Well, I'm going to state the following. While I understand that Mr. Boykin did not intentionally fail to appear on this matter because it appears though he's been continuously in custody from other matters, the court does have the information based upon the um, Warrants that were acted for Mr. Boykin at the time of his arrest regarding Sterling Heights, the scanner from the Wayne County <coughs> Tether Unit, as well as Larceny from Dearborn. In addition, there are two bond conditions because one is from Clinton Township, the other one is from this court and Third Circuit Court regarding the May 22nd incident that Mr. Boykin has already has now pled guilty on, which indicated. No contact with Daisha Griffin. And at the time that those bond conditions were in effect, or at the time of this incident on June 30th, those bond conditions were in effect. And your client seems to have an issue with following the court orders. So I don't, I don't, I don't, you do, sir. Please stop. You do. You were with Miss Griffin. You were ordered. Okay, this is where it's about to get wild. That's why I went ahead and up the screen on y'all. This is about to get wild. I want y'all to be able to see this, man. His emotions he's going through. It's about to get rough. Stay away from these ladies. Stay away from these ladies. Okay? I know. I know. Trust me, I know what it's like to not stay away. But for your freedom, listen, man, she ain't got nothing to lose. Only you have something to lose by going to see her. If she wants something from you, whether that she wants some, some good good, or she just wants to cook you a nice little meal, or she just wants to see you, or she just wants to yell at you, or she just wants to watch Netflix, or she wants to watch Hulu, maybe she want to watch the game if she's a football fan. Ain't no good case scenario, good case scenario for you. Because while you're watching a football game, the cops are going to be watching you. And now you're going to be watching the game from the tail. Not to have contact with her by two different courts, two different jurisdictions ordered you not to have contact. You continued to have contact. Not only did you continue to have contact, but it's alleged that you were that she's a victim in another contact now. So, given all of that, the fact that you have absconded on your tether previously, you, you are the process. I would suggest you not say anything and let your new attorney handle the rest of this matter. That's up to you, Mr. Porter. Anything you say can be used against you in your upcoming criminal proceedings. Do you understand that? Yes. The court is going to indicate 
a $100,000 cash bond. Your Honor, with your court of appeals, you can get a 10%. No, counsel, there are three current warrants out for your client's arrest. Ooh, let's, hold on, I gotta go back. 10%. No, counsel, there are three. Your Honor, with your court at least make it a 10%. No, counsel, there are three current warrants out for your client's arrest. There are continuous allegations as to bond violations. And while I understand that some of them are mere allegations, when your client and the protective person are both listed the same police report as being at the same location for one of the effect dates, it rises a little bit higher than the allegation. So $100,000 cash bond, no 10%, no surety. Oh, it hurts. A hundred bones, man. A hundred racks of bones. You're gonna be sitting in that cell nice and long. No 10%. <laughs> with the following bond conditions. Hold on a second. Not to have any contact with Ms. Griffin. Does she still reside at the apartment? Uh, I don't I don't know. I haven't talked to her. That's why I've been trying to I've been I will I would like to talk after this because I don't know. I don't know. I'm just confused. I don't know how my bond goes from three thousand to a hundred thousand. I haven't talked to her. Okay, like all sir, of these is allegations. Sir, is, sir I'm I trying to clarify to... for you. Please let me finish. I'm trying to clarify for you. Your bond did not go from three thousand to hundred thousand. You still have that three thousand dollar bond in whichever case you're referencing. This case is a one hundred thousand dollar cash bond, so it's a separate case. You have now four pending cases that you have bonds on. Well, five if you count the one that you're down there in Third Circuit on. Hold up. So I got a hundred thousand dollar bond here. For this case, yes. And what is this case? Uh. Uh. Oh. 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 Whoa, man! I. I... I don't feel sorry for him because he has all these warrants and all these bonds. I was just trying to see what happens when, you know, they say $100,000 cash bond. I'm believing that the lawyer said, can you at least make that 10% making me making a thousand? I'm assuming he said to pay to get him out. Um, but the, she said no 10%, nothing none of that. You're going for 100000 And that's not even to include the other bonds he has. This is for this one in particular case. He must have done something crazy in order for it to be this wild. Because as far as I know, this case in particular is because he contacted Mrs. Griffin, right? So if he's getting 100,000 bonds for going against that, because apparently he keeps doing this. I, brother, I, I, I'm going to keep reiterating this. You made a $100,000 decision for some kitty cat. $100,000 for some kitty cat. There ain't no cat in this world worth a hundred thousand dollars they sell it for six dollars on only fans a month i'm not saying go in there y'all know how i feel about that site all i'm saying dog is it dang sure if i tell you don't go for six dollar cat i would guarantee you not to do a hundred thousand dollars i don't care who she is see because she i don't want to keep saying this but brother she has nothing to lose she has nothing to lose you have a hundred thousand dollars to lose you gotta pay Unlawfully imprisonment and uh resisting obstruction, yes. And resisting obstruction. Your your honor, I haven't talked to I haven't myself. Anything. But it's it's like he don't, even, he don't even know what's going on, Your Honor. I can give you more details of what's going on than he sir. can. Your Honor, I miss court. Sir. 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 You know he done. Oh, please. You know he done. Please let me hold on, sir. Let me explain this. Okay. Okay, go ahead, yes. Two things. One, your attorney has a job to protect your rights. Okay. He also has a job. So one of your rights is you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say orally or in writing may be used against you in court. So what your attorney is trying to do, sir, is to prevent you from saying anything that may implicate you in any further proceedings. That's number one. Number two, 
I understand that you have been in custody since June 30th. I understand that you're stating that you have not had any contact with Ms. Griffin. I understand all of that. I also understand that at the time of your arrest on June 30th, you had three outstanding warrants for your arrest. You had a violation of a bond condition. On June 30th, you also had a bond condition out of this court. So, all of those are factors that this court has taken into consideration for the protection of the public and the protection of Ms. Griffin. The fact that you haven't had any contact while you've been locked up doesn't have any bearing because you've been locked up. Yes, you want to come? Yes, you want to come? Yes, Your Honor, I also understand the reason that I have the, the bond violation in Clinton Township because I missed court and I paid a bond there. I didn't hey, somebody, somebody in the I comment haven't... section, please explain to me, because she said no 10%. I'm trying to look up if that is, is, is she saying that you have to pay $100,000 in full or is she saying no 10% like the attorney was saying, can you at least make that $10,000 instead of $100,000? I don't think he was saying that. But somebody explain that to me because I've never seen you not able to pay 10%. But of course, I could be wrong. This is not my area of expertise. I'm learning. So if y'all know something different than I do, let me know. I haven't been doing nothing, Your Honor. Like, I haven't. I swear I haven't. Like, I haven't. I got these violations with the tether thing, which they sorted out in a third district court that I never did nothing to the tether. I never cut the tether. When I got locked up, the tether was still on my leg. And this shows if you go, if not trying to like tell you how you, you, you do, do, do to supposed to do your job, because I know you've been doing this for years, Your Honor. It, 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 it shows that I never violated my tether. I mean, hold up. Let him cook. Because he about to boil himself alive. That's why my judge gave me my tether back. When I went, I got all my paperwork right here. I swear to God, I do your right. I got I got documents and everything. I haven't been okay. doing anything. And most of the time, right, I don't be communicating with her. I just want to go home and be a father to my kid and work. That's the only thing I ask to do, your Okay. So I hear everything you're saying. So even if we take out the parole of yeah. warrant, okay, even if we take that out of the equation. The other factors still remain. The bond violation on Flint Township is because you had contact with Ms. Griffin is what it indicated in the report and why that was a bond violation. So that is where the Clinton Township comes in, okay? Yes. Your next court, your next court date is next Thursday, October 5th. You're not to have any contact with Ms. Griffin. That's phone contact, text message, email, social media, third party, anything for the like. Don't send her any mail from the jail. Don't call her from the jail. Nothing. You're not to enter the premises at your at her address or place of employment. You're not to possess or consume any alcohol or drugs unless prescribed. You're not to possess or have access to any firearms and or any weapons. GPS tether, house arrest. So, 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 Your Honor, somebody could be able to get a personal bond this one? Please. No, sir. I'm indicating your bond conditions in the event your bond is posted. All right, Your Honor. Well, well can you release me to like take care of my other hoes at least? Because I've just been sitting here and I still got like stuff once I'm done with here. I got to deal with this and deal with this. Can you at least release me to take care of my hoes? My other hoes so I can be clear when I come back and see you. Out in Clinton Township, Belize. Hold on. You you want me to release you to take care of your other holds? There's nothing that prevents you from taking care of your holds right now, sir. You can contact you, you, the court. I, I, I did I please do mail. I've been doing okay. please do mail. Okay. And so are those plea by mail being granted or no? Uh, you, you, Your Honor, they, 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 they told me I got a, a, a judge got to order me to be released to take care of my hoes. I've been trying to do it because because every judge, every judge that I go up from, give me these high bonds, not knowing that I can go take care of this stuff and be out. That's what I'm saying. Like I haven't, I just been sitting, Your Honor, on dead time. Like I want a job, I want to be able to get out and get a job and take care of my daughter, but I can't do none of that stuff because every time I go to court, I get these high bonds because there's one person that I haven't been communicating with. 
I've really been sitting in jail. I learned my lesson. I won't do none of this stuff. That's why I've been asking. Oh, oh baby. It just hurts me to hear it. I won't do it ever again, Judge. Please just let me out. Please just let me get up out of here. I, 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 can't, I can't sit in this cell another day. If I got to eat one more biscuit, if I got to watch Larry one more time, one more time, if I got to see Larry, you got to let me out of here. Larry is driving me crazy. He's he talking about the war. He was never part of the war, Lord. If I got to eat one more slice of TV dinner meatloaf, I don't know what I'm going to do, Judge. You got to let me out here. I got to go down to my local McDonald's and get to work. I will flip burgers before I do this. After I go see Miss Griffin. <laughs> Pause, please. Pause, please. This is another it's process. Okay. And she not even going to come to Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Freaking. At some point, you are not in custody after your May 22nd arrest when this court, when you were arraigned by this court, because it's alleged she was the victim again in your June 30th matter. So, sir, you may have other holds that you need to take care of. You may have other matters that you need to take care of. However, it's alleged that you committed another crime while you're out on bond in this court, that you had contact with her while you were out on bond from this court. You have other warrants from other courts, one of which is a felony. You also have a bond violation from a Clinton Township court because you had contact with Ms. Griffin again. So clearly there is an issue with not having contact with Ms. Griffin. One of the conditions or one of the purposes of bond is to ensure the safety of the public and the safety of the victim. This bond that this court is set is going to ensure that. We are done for, for right now. We'll see you back on October 5th. Your Honor, but she can just easily, Your Honor, she can just easily, like, has she been lying? She'll call and, and just be like, oh, I see him. Oh, he messing with me. And the whole time, I'm not doing nothing to her. That, that's why I don't understand. Like, y'all just go off these words with no proof. Sir, this stuff sir, sir. Oh, just, I'm not like this being played with. Excuse me. When you, when you and the victim have a that you're not supposed to have contact with are in the same location, that is a problem. That is a problem. Right, I got and set up. You're stop, right. stop. No, sir, we're done. We're done for right now. That is something you can address with your attorney next week, and he can bring up to the prosecutor. All right, Your Honor. So next week is like my preliminary exam, because that, 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 that's the next court I want to be able to go to. I don't, I, I'm letting you know I want to be able to go to a plenary exam because she's been telling my family that she's not going to show up in court. She told my family sir, this, so it's just wasting sir, my time and my life. Your next, excuse me. Your next court date is October 5th. That's a PCC. If you want to explain to your attorney that you would like to hold an exam, you have every right to do that. And then we'll set an exam date from there. You so like when my bond right? get lawyer from there, because my lawyer, when I when I talk to these court appointed lawyers, they don't never explain sir. me nothing. I'll be lost. Okay, sir. Then what you can do is you can ask as many questions as you would like to your attorney when you're meeting with your attorney for the probable cause conference. I cannot tell you what's going to happen next Thursday. If that was the case, I could give everybody winning lottery ticket numbers. I don't have that ability. Okay, so I will see you back next Thursday. Perhaps you can have a list of questions that you have that you would like to ask your attorney and some other things that you're not understanding. But as of now, this matter is concluded. We'll see you back next Thursday at 9.30, I think I said. Okay, have a good day. Thank you. Thank you, Wayne County Jail. And that's it, man. I think it, they normally put these court dates out, so maybe we can watch this one next week. Um, they keep saying next Thursday, uh, so we'll see. There's another court case I wanted to check out that's also supposed to be happening tomorrow, and so we'll see how that one goes. But I do have other things I want to talk about, so <clears throat> let's talk to me right quick. Let me uh, go ahead and break the rest of this down for you, and let's get my entire 
my entire thoughts on this. So, <clears throat> man, I have been around women, okay? You have been around women. Can we agree on that? Okay. Some women are good women. Some women are not good women. Okay? Some women, you cannot be around. It looks like in this case, this man, it is not just, it doesn't sound like it's just a case of he, they were just toxic. Something tells me that he got maybe violent or maybe he did something. I don't know. Or maybe they just got into a really bad argument and they were, some reason she tells they, they have a court order for them not to be around each other. So either it got really toxic between the both of them, or maybe it was just him. Either way, let me say this. I don't know if she's really inviting him over there or if he's just showing up over there. Once again, we don't know. I, she is not here to give her side of the story. So I will say this. I will give both scenarios. First scenario. Y'all are on talking terms. And she tells you to come over. Come over here, get this kitty cat. Come over here, come eat this nice meal. Come over here, see your daughter. I don't know what she said. In any circumstance, you do not ever go over there. I don't care what she offers, what she wants to talk about. If she tells you you need to see your kid, you don't go over there for any reason because it's a hundred thousand dollar mistake for you. You go over there and make a mistake. It's right back to the cell for you. Now you sitting there in a cold cell every single day, sleeping on hard metal and a little bit of cushioning, trying to survive every single day with a hundred men in one bunk. I mean, not one bunk. What do you call it? Uh, I'm assuming I'm assuming he's in jail and not prison. So if he's in jail, he's probably sitting in a whole thing of people. You know, this is this a little loading cell. You know, where you probably got 50 people in there all sleeping in beds. If he's not there and he's actually in prison and he's going into like a two man cell, still sucks. Now you get no kitty cat. Now you get nothing. You could be sitting at home right now, living your life, watching some uh, golf, football, basketball. You could even be watching cricket. And now you're sitting in a cell looking at bars every day. Maybe y'all get TV, maybe you don't. It ain't never worth it, dog. <laughs> ain't no woman worth that, I'm sorry. In the second scenario, you're not supposed to be around her and you're showing up anyway when she doesn't want you to. Listen, brother, that's disgusting. You deserve to sit in that cell. You know you're not supposed to be around her. She is obviously scared of you. You're a court appointed not to see each other and you keep going over there to bother this young lady. And you keep doing it on the case that you want to take care of your daughter. That's gone, brother. Whatever happened between y'all. Sorry, you, you will have your day to see your daughter. But this is not how you do it. Because you, every time you fight to see your daughter or you go over there to go bother, bother this young lady, you're only making your daughter's life worse. Because all she's ever going to keep seeing is her father getting in handcuffs and getting taken away day after day after day. So what are you gaining by saying you want to go see your daughter if you know that every time you go see her, there's a good chance you're going to be put right back in the back of a cop car? I'm telling you, for somebody who had seen that happen to a family member, watching them get taken away in a car over and over and over and over over the years, it is not something you want to see. It does not build a relationship. It does not make her want to fight for you. It does not make her want to come see you. It just makes her eventually, as she grows up, to start thinking you're actually just an idiot or you really don't care or you're a danger. One of those three things, she's not, or all three possibly. So if you really want to go see your daughter, young man, the best thing for you to do is get your life together or do whatever you have to do. Even if, like I said, even if this is all not your fault, I don't care. There is no decision you can make against the court that's going to make all this better. I don't care about justice. I don't care if she's lying on you. You stay away from there. Okay. My camera froze. Let me bring it back over here. So if you are in that place, please make a decision, be smart, be bright, do not go and see this lady. You have your day. And I want to say this, if she, he said that she would lie on him, that's what the GPS tether is for. They will know exactly where you're at. So if she says you were there, be like, hey, GPS said I ain't left this house. GPS said I went here to McDonald's, flip burgers, went to my cousin's JJ house, came right back here. I was never in her vicinity, never around her, never did any of that. You see me going one, two, three, back to the crib. Ugh, man, don't do it, baby. Don't do it. I wish you the, I wish you the best. 
I hope you can turn your life around and I hope things get better, man. But at this point, you're screwing up, young man. And what can you say? All right. Hope you have a good day. Goodbye. <laughs> I'm not going to say I hope you have a good day because I don't know who you are. I don't know who you are. You could be an awful human being. I'm saying I hope you get your life turned around. Let me just take back what I said. If you're all, as awful as everything's making it sound, young man, get help. Go pray. Find God. Good luck to you.